So obviously on the bench today is an Atari 800. I was an Atari ST user back in the day. Never owned an 800 before. I've had this system since Thursday of last week, so about four days now. I've done a bit of gaming on it, played quite a bit on it, uh, struggled to get video out of it, had to make a custom cable for uh, video to go to my uh, Commodore monitor. I've got a, a supposedly a, a, a better manufactured cable on order. Uh, had a lot of fun with it so far. Like I said, I've never had an 800 before and I was intrigued. I have picked up a Fuji Net. Uh, anybody with an 800 probably knows what that is and it's actually a really useful device. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, the disk drive emulation, that kind of stuff, is pretty cool. I waited for one that was in original box. Uh, the box is in fairly bad shape, but I wanted original box. I've also got an Atari uh, 1050, I believe it is, floppy drive. That's the newer one that's in box. So it looks to be in really good shape. We'll look at that in a future video on a 410 cassette recorder in original box that needs some work. I think at least one of the belts has failed in it. So what do we plan to do with this guy today? Well, first thing that's happened here is I've printed out the Sam's computer facts for it. I've read through this, uh, spent some time inside of it. Understand, uh, it, you know, the basics of the machine. So that helps. And, and of course, I'm now printing and binding my own books. I've only bought one of the punches for, for this style of binding. And so I can punch pages, and I'm just using a plastic sheet for a cover. I got my capacitor kit from console 5. I didn't know they even existed until I went looking. I believe they're here in the US. Uh, I've had two shipments from them. Very happy with the packaging, uh, with everything. Just been very happy with, with the two shipments from them. So a shout out to console5.com. Thank you for being awesome. I've also in my possession got a, if I can get it out of the packaging here a new old stock 800 keyboard so this is a brand new old stock 800 keyboard but I think I'm gonna swap in uh, it'll be a complete refresh this keyboards dirty and I'm looking at the color of the keycaps I guess it's not faded I felt like it was faded a bit and maybe it's not quite as bright as the new one but I'm gonna go ahead and swap that new keyboard in as well just because I can so we've got a few things to do here. I don't know if we'll get them all done in one video or it'll take two. We'll find out. But the first thing is to get the 800 open. So I've already removed, I've got them here, I've got them captured. I've seen in some videos where there's a little thumb thing you can press back to release the top. Mine just didn't have those. It just had screws in these little metal brackets. I removed those so I can pull the top off. Easy enough to do. Uh, I did order also the uh, was it Rev C I think basic language. There was Rev A that had a minor bug. As I understand it, Rev B that fixed that bug but caused some stuff that worse, and then Rev C was the latest release. And I went ahead and sprung for a brand new cartridge with the manual. Just it was kind of like, you know, I'm going to have a brand new cartridge and manual. I'm kind of trying to treat this like I bought everything new, and so I get to unbox it and hook it up and read about it. And like I say, it is all new to me. So let's set the cartridge aside. I've seen other people's teardowns where there's card guides laying down on the sides here and where the cards are in plastic shells. Obviously I don't have that. There's just a little alignment plastic thing here. It's kind of an interesting design. It's got a little bit of rubber that I guess is to catch the top and these kind of little springy things to kind of help hold it in center. So that's an interesting solution. We'll capture that. As expected, four 16K RAM cards. Cold fingers. Those look looks really nice. Uh, 
This was supposedly an early model. I think I think it was when I, I bought it. The date codes on these are 49th week of 82. Yeah, date codes there are pretty much all 82. Date codes here are 82 as well. I suspect all these cards are going to be exactly identical. And they really are looking at everything, the resistors, the date codes, they are very much identical suspect this one will be identical as well and it is so I'm guessing these are the original cards that came with the system there's been no cards swapped which is nice uh, I want to protect these a little bit Shoot, I should have some anti-static foam here but it's downstairs I'll roll this one and this one in and then this one in. I don't want the pins scratching the surface of the chips, that kind of stuff. It just makes things look old. We have the ROM card. Date codes of 83. Not sure there's, I don't really see a date code on there. 35th week of 82, second week of 83, 15th week of 79. So yeah, I, I would guess very much again, this is the original ROM card. It's got that same AT, ATMC made in Taiwan sticker on it. I've had zero issue with the machine. It's just ran very solidly, very happy with it. Uh, I want to remove the compact composite video cable. I don't need it. I suspect it's been opened up once, and I suspect the screw here is missing. Although, now the screw's down in there, I guess it's just loose. So I really think at this point it's removed these screws. I have no idea what the lengths of them are. It was really tight, yet the case was very floppy there. These may have never been removed before. Well, you know me, I have to open it up and look inside. So all three of those are the same length. That one's the same length. one's the same length so all five of those are the same length kind of important to know what lengths go where happy with that it's got the four original rubber feet on it it looks like which I'm happy with you know it, it's in really good shape overall uh, very happy with the purchase so does that allow the plastic top now to come off feel like there's something else holding up in place. Is there a screw under the sticker? I don't remember there being in what I looked at. So, let me flip it back over so it's not laying on the keycaps. Let's look at disassembly. I'm sure there's a disassembly diagram in here. Let me 
through service checks. As I always do, I print it out what I can on larger paper and folded it. So it fits in. Why don't I almost feel like I don't have the whole manual printed out here? seen people take these apart. I swear this top lifts off. Ah, uh, the bottom comes off. That's what I'm not remembering. Okay, and it's all screwed down into the top. Okay. speaker just floats there. I'm just going to plain remove it and set it aside. There's a screw to a post. Boy, look how clean those boards are. Looks like the same length screw. Again, looks like the same length of screw. See the whole thing rocking. There's got to be more than that that held. Looks like this one here also may hold it in place. Yep. Those are all three the same length. And all three the same length is what I've got captured. should lift out or the top lift off. I should be able to unhook the keyboard here maybe. persuasion to come loose. Partly because of the angle it's bent at. Okay. That releases all of this. I'm going to set this aside. And this will disassemble from Underneath, the first thing we can do is pull out this composite video cable. I see no reason to keep it on the system. I won't be using it. Take a look at what I've got here. Man, look how clean those boards are, even with the openings in the case. They're just, it's incredibly clean inside. I'm pleasantly surprised. There's the vents in the case, and there's just no dust infiltration that I can see. It is surprisingly clean. Okay, these are going to be some machine screw into a lock washer. As it's going into that cast, I believe it's aluminum or maybe it's uh, pewter, part of the huge RF shielding strategy. Washer, screw. I had noticed on eBay that I think it's best electronics. Somebody has new old stock power supply board and. Uh, the main board with all the chips and I think it's $100 for the main board and 25 for the power supply board and I considered buying them and then thought I'd hold off and see if it worked and part of that decision was also 
what is it what, what kind of shape is it in how does it look inside I see no reason to attempt to replace these it is incredibly clean inside uh, so clean it's very surprising to me so uh, there's a piece of paper floating around here I need to spot Where did it go? There it is. I'm gonna make some notes here. As soon as I find the pencil, I've got got this long connector here. It's got plus twelve labeled up here. 5V labeled here and there's a 4 pin down here and it's blue green white blue green white and black or purple purple just so I make sure I get that back on the right orientation it's stiff enough I don't think it'll be an issue that should release this so I can walk it up off it needs to walk off the interconnect pins here that are what tie everything together. So it's an interesting design where they've got these row of pins that poke up, come in through the bottom of the board, and into here. So we're going to be looking at replacing these two caps, these two caps, and I think all of, all these four here. Well, it's actually on this piece of paper. Is should be somebody else had drawn up. I uh, found this on YouTube. I watched a recapping video on YouTube. He talked about going to console 5 to get the cap kit, which I did. He provided this as a download from a link on his YouTube channel. He's at YouTube Mac 64 MAC, or Mac 84 MAC 84. But he had a little diagram here of the capacitors and where they go. Because there was really nothing that I saw from console 5. Not that it's complex to replace, but there was nothing that really was a guide to replacing them. Of course, if I can't find the bag of caps, we are at a standstill here. You know, stuff vanishes in my shop all the time. It is the default. There they are. I've got, an, I've got another table off here to the right. So... They're physically different sizes, but he talks about it in the video. We'll talk about it here, why these are physically smaller and potentially with higher voltage ratings. Uh, it's just the technology's gotten better. We'll look at that. And then we've got two on the main board here, and I needed to remove the cast material here, the pewter or aluminum. Uh, to do this, so let's go ahead and remove it. The screws look like there might be a little. No, this is still a good screwdriver. One. I'm going to lay them down next to the hole they come out of. You can see I'm working on an anti static surface here. Now, see, this one wasn't tight, it was never driven all the way in. See, I don't think this has been a part before. I would expect all these to be the same length, but we'll know once we get them all out. Those have all been, there's three down here now. Very loose. That one had some torque to it. And these are smaller, self-tapping, coarse thread. And I kind of expected that, that they would potentially be different down here. Nope, that was a machine screw. So what has been done here? This is odd. Is that a? And this is a machine screw. So why is this one a self-tapper? And all of those are the same. Yet there's a self-tapper right there. I don't understand that. There's a 
self tapping screw there. It's quite possible that when they assembled it, they overdrove the machine screw, stripped the threads, and put the self tapper in to get a screw in there. Or possibly somebody's had it has had it open and did that. Can I get it to lift up? Okay. It looks like that actually releases this. I just can't believe how clean this guy is on the inside. Very, very clean. So there's a electrolytic right here, and there's one up underneath here, and this plate on the bottom needs to come off. Dead spider, it looks like. So there actually is a little bit of ick in it. I think it's a spider. It might just be a bit of no, it's an insect. So I now need to release these. Guys, so it's got a little pin that you push out, push downward to release. It needs to go down a little further than that. Shoot, I think I punched it all the way out. There it is. Now I can get the little rivet body to come out. It's better not to punch them all the way out because it's hard to get that little shaft back into the little rivet body. But that's what I did. Uh, probably should pull a CPU card out while we're here. Don't have any place to lay it at the moment. She punched it all the way out again. Well, such is life. And it rolled way back there. Wow, I cannot believe how stiff that is. Those two I didn't punch all the way loose. I will leave those floating there. That's interesting. I guess it's to provide support underneath the uh, edge connectors. Started up easy or went back in easy enough. These big old clumsy hands of mine. I'm going to capture those. These don't seem. Well, it actually did push through and come out, so it's probably better to. Yeah, it's better to get those out of there and capture it so they don't fall out accidentally and get lost. This can then be set aside. The plastic here has a couple of clips. You hold it on. It should release it. And we are down to the bare board. National Semiconductor Park, Rockwell, 6520, I, I'm guessing that's the, no, the processor is actually on this card. 
So 6502. And I, and I know two of these are custom chips. Uh, I don't remember which is which. It was interesting looking for R309, which is the big pot here that is the video levels. Uh, looking through the manual trying to find it because it fir the first monitor I tried just wouldn't sync up. And I thought maybe the video levels were just not sufficient. And of course that turned out to not be true. When I drug in my Commodore monitor, it's like a 1702 I think, and it worked just fine once I got actually a properly wired cable. Uh, but it's just interesting that that pot there but that gets back to the antique chip being on this card, which is, as I understand it, the video chip. Like I said, this is all new to me. It's a new system for me to explore. The one thing I haven't paid attention to are things like what orientation this card was in. I don't honestly know. I will have to review video. Well, it's got a pin 1 marking, and this has got a pin 2 marking, so it must have been in that orientation. And then the cards in here face towards it, but we will verify that before we apply power. So at this point, I'm going to fire up the desoldering gun. It'll take it a few minutes to heat up. Uh, and we will remove old caps. So I will come back when it's warm and we'll remove caps. Um, 